title of my talk today is using prefetch and preload to speed up your site. And it's basically just a short demo of using this new library that Google released like one week ago called, called Quicklink. Uh, but, and it's a, it's a library that does uh, prefetches for all the links that are in the viewport. But before I'll talk about that library and before I'll demo how, how it works, we have to understand how, how a browser works or how, how a web, web page is rendered on the screen. So basically, this is a simplified version of what happens when you type in address in a browser and then you click enter. Uh, so this is super simplified. So I don't really know all the stuff that's happening, but basically uh, from the point that the browser receives an HTML document, so what happens is that the, there's a thing called pre look ahead parser that goes through the document quickly in order to find resources that are important. So like requests for images or scripts, or fonts, CSS requ re resources that are important for the page. So then the browser fires those, those requests uh, immediately before going through the whole document. So then it starts actually parsing the document and then what is important here is that when it starts rendering, when it comes to the rendering phase, it will go through the HTML document from top to bottom, but it has to stop every time there is a, a request, a blocking request for fonts or CSS or JavaScript that is not async. So it has to stop, connect to that address if it's in a, a, another um, origin, wait for the request uh, response, then parse that response, execute it if it's JavaScript, and then continue rendering. So that's basically what slows down web page rendering when you have some blocking re re resources on your page. And basically, you want to move the first meaningful paint and time to interactive to the left, so as quickly as possible, render something meaningful and have the first paint happen immediately as soon as possible. And this you can do, there are many ways to do it, like optimize this. One of the many ways to improve it is to give the browser better hints about what's important for the page. So basically the modern browsers are quite optimized. Like the, the browser vendors have been doing a lot of work on like optimizing stuff, so they, do quite well, but then, then again, there are situations where stuff come in wrong order, and you you know best what's the correct order or what's what's best order for performance. So there are these possibilities to give give the browser some hints about what's important, and I will go through some of them. So I will go through DNS prefetch, preconnect, preload, and pre-render, what they mean and how they can be used or and how they should or could be used. Um, and yeah, pre-render is not a hint, like priority hint, but anyways, I will go through that as well. So first of all, DNS prefetch and uh, pre-connect. So this will speed up. So basically if you have, on your site, you have stuff, resources coming from different origin. So for example, if you have a web font that comes from fonts.gstatic.com, so Google Web Font, then the browser, it has already connected to your server and fetched the HTML document, but then it has to create a new connection to Google's servers. So it will have, have to do DNS lookup, TCP handshake, and TLS ne negotiation, and those can be quite costly on slow networks. So those you can try to speed up by telling the browser in the beginning of your HTML document, you can tell the browser that, okay, I want to create the DNS, do the DNS uh, lookup immediately when the browser re receives the document. Or then you can say that, okay, create the connection to this, this domain immediately because we're gonna need it. So it will speed up. I have a picture here. W what happens if you use pre-connect or if you don't? So here on the Upper picture, we can see here are the font font requests, and you can see on blue, it's a bit small maybe, but on blue there is DNS, TCP, TLS. So 
all those happen here when the browser starts the request to fonts gstatic.com, but then if you pre-connect that domain, then those connections will be established already earlier, and then it's faster to fetch the fonts. So that might speed up your page a bit to get the fonts earlier if you use web fonts. And then another uh, resource, like priority hint, is called preload, and it can be used to tell the browser that fetch this because we're gonna, we are going to need it later. Or like we are sure that we are going to need it later. So the good thing about preload is that it it's, it's, it's doesn't block the onload event. So it happens in the background. And here's an example how you can do it. If you know that you will need this font from that address. And then prefetch, where I was going to say that sites like dev.2 is using this. So when you visit the site and hover over links, it will actually, in the background, prefetch those pages. And that means that it will send a low priority request to that address, and then everything it returns is in your browser cache. So it feels a lot faster. Or like It feels fast because everything is from cache. And yeah, this should be used if you are sure, or like if you are confident that the user might end up on that page. And then there is, you, you can do this in, the, in your HTML by setting the link, link uh, at, uh, attribute, as you can see here, link rel prefetch. So this, the, but you can also se send it from the server as a response header in the link, link header. So here you can see an example. You can, in the link header, you can add rel pre-connect to that domain. And this is true to, for pre-connect, pre-load, and pre-fetch. So we are actually using this in our projects. So this makes, make, uh, gives the browser already in the response, it knows that, okay, I have to pre-load or pre-fetch these, these URLs. It doesn't even have to start parsing the HTML before doing it. And then there is a thing called pre-rendering, which opens a hidden tab to that, that URL you're giving it, and then renders the, the page and executes JavaScript. And then when you actually click that link, then it's already, it just sw swaps the hidden tab to the visible tab. And I don't know about you, but I would not recommend using this. But there, I read somewhere that Google might use it or might have been using it in the search results page. So reasons why I wouldn't recommend this is it might like cost your users quite much if they are in a limited data plan. But that's not the pr really a problem in Finland. <laughs> but And then it might mess up your analytics it's if your analytics is based on page views and then the user doesn't actually go to that page, but you have already rendered that page. But yeah, it's good to know that, that something like that exists as well. So then, what is Quick Link? It's a library that Google released like one week ago, I think on Thursday last week. It's a library that does prefetching for you. It prefetches all the links that are in the viewport. So it uses, uses um, what do you call it, intersection observer to detect those links that are visible and then fetches those or prefetches those. And it's inspired by Gatsby JS. So if you're using Gatsby, then you don't need this. It's you have all of this already. But the good good thing about this, it it respects, like checks if the connection is super slow, and then it does nothing. And you can also limit the area where it looks for the, or you can give it an element to look for links in. So you you don't have to. Fetch all, prefetch all the links in the document, but you can give it an important, or you can also give it a list of links that you want to prefetch, but then it doesn't use the uh, intersection observer. So why would you use that? It's super tiny, and it uses intersection observer, so it doesn't fetch too much. So it only fetches those that you see on the viewport, because if you set multiple uh, pre 
prefetch links from your server response, then you have no control over if the user actually sees those links or not. And it's a truly a progressive enhancement. So if your browser doesn't support it or if it fails, then the site still works. Nothing breaks, but if it works, it might speed up your site a bit. And it's production ready. It was <laughs> launched like one week ago, and there is already 1.0 out. So why not use it? <laughs> so yeah, I'm trying to going to try to demo this a bit on my because I tried this on my personal blog. Um, so first of all, I'll try to demo this. First, first thing, um, if you don't know about this, this is a really useful thing in uh, Chrome Dev Dev Tools. You can block block a resource by URL or a domain. So I'm I'm now blocking the quicklink.js, and I'm on fast 3G. I would use slower connection to show the effect more clearly, but then quick link doesn't work if my connection is slower. So it, it respects the connection. So, But for fast, fast 3G, it actually does stuff if you don't block the domain. So this, I'll first... Okay, I have cache enabled, but I, I'll clear clear the cache and reload the page. So it's quite fast, but then because it's a super simple simple website. So imagine this would be a production larger website. And then now I just opened the, I cleared the cache and I only opened the front page and I'll navigate to maybe like this article or blog post. And yeah, it was quite fast, but still use saw some loading. So then I'll go back and in a unblock these quick links, JS, and then I'll clear the cache so that we can maybe see the effect. Hopefully, if it does work. So now you, you can see in here in the requests, um, there are so the basic requests for this site end up about here for the quick link, but then after these, these are prefetches. And you can see the initiator is quicklinks.js. And they have the lowest lowest possible priority. So, so the browser knows that these are not important, but if you have idle time, then fetch these. And as you can see now, if you remember, I cleared the cache, and but these have been prefetched in the background. So now if I open, say, this article, it should be in the cache, so it should be quite fast. Yeah, and it was faster than faster than without the prefetching. So this was super simplified demo, so not not really. Um, but it shows how easy. I can show you quickly something about how how simple this library is because it's like one, under one one kilobyte. So you can actually go and read the source code. It's like there's a request idle callback that just yeah polyfills the re idle callback, and then there is a prefetch, which is like 115 lines of code, and then there is this file, which is like 100 lines of code. So it's super simplified, and you can you can read it. You you can see here if you can see. Let's zoom in a bit. That by default it uses this strategy, so it adds a link to the document, and then adds it the rel attribute to prefetch, and then it sets the URL there, and that's how browser then decides to prefetch that URL. And then there's other you can also give quick link a parameter that uses more higher priority if you want, but that's not recommended because it should be a low priority. It's not like you don't want to block the rendering or block the UI with that. So yeah, and in the end I have some links to some useful resources about prefetching and preloading, and sorry about only including links to Google resources because Google is doing pretty much a pretty awesome job in like web optimizing web performance except for AMP, but yeah, that's another story. Um, yeah, that's the end. Do you have any questions?
<laughs> no, it doesn't, because you give the browser the priority. So the priority is the lowest. So the browser will fetch all the important requests first and then render the page. And then it's, this library uses the request idle callback. So when the browser is idle, then it starts doing that stuff. So it shouldn't block anything. Uh, is there any way to uh, kind of set what kind of information should be prefetched in the next page? Let's say if one of these URLs have a very, very heavy page, having lots of, I don't know, big images and stuff. Is there anything to, to do? You can, in this library, you can pass it re like functions that where you match the request URLs and then ignore them or something. And then you can give it regex to ignore some URLs if you want. And then, but yeah, that's a good point because, but it, I think it should be only used for like pages, so only HTML. So if you prefetch the HTML, the images that are in that HTML file will not be, th those requests won't, won't, hap won't happen because the browser doesn't render that page. It just fetches the content of the document.